Welcome, future shapers! You've just tuned in to the nexus of inspiring leaders who share their successes and their failures. Insights that will motivate, educate, and illuminate your path to a very bright future. Welcome to Shaping the Future podcast. Here's your host, Greg Kell. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, future shapers. This is Greg at Future, the Shaping the Future podcast. Thank you for joining us today. We are pleased to host Jim Husen, who is a family law attorney practicing in Riverside, California. Tim has a license as a marriage and family therapist and a doctorate in clinical psychology. Jim is an opponent of transition. He is becoming a forensic psychologist focusing on child custody evaluations. Jim, with that introduction, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I grew up in Corona here in California. And I, when I was 18, I joined the Navy. I was in the Navy. I wasn't sure what I was going to do in life when I got out of the Navy. So I basically, I went to school in Colorado. We thought we were going to become missionaries at the time. Later on, I decided to become a pastor. Then after that, I decided to become a lawyer, went to law school, and became a lawyer in 2000. Well, that's quite the set of transitions. Yeah. From the missionary to the pastor to the lawyer. That's right. Outstanding. So tell me, Jim, with all of that area of expertise, tell me what are you most passionate about today? Today, I would say I'm most passionate about helping children, helping children have good relationships with their parents. I think that that's the foundation of the future. That's the foundation of our nation. I think that's the foundation of the world being able to get along as kids who grew up secure and have good adaptive skills that they're taught by their parents. Hopefully their parents do teach. Because yeah. we definitely are, their kids are <laughs> our future. Those are the futures that we need to shape. Yeah. So I respect what you're doing, Jim. When did you start your legal practice here? I started way back in 2000. Uh-huh. I remember it was 2000 because uh, you may remember the Y2K virus that was supposed to hit and crash all our computers. Yeah. And so that's how I remember it was year 2000. They were just trying to get us afraid, weren't they? <laughs> afraid everything was going to fall apart on December 31st, 1999. Did it happen? No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. So we can't fall for everything we hear. Uh-huh. So over the last 15 years in, in your practice, you've probably had some ups and downs. Tell us about the one story that will benefit our future Shapers Nation from some of the biggest challenge that you've had in your law, legal career. Yeah. Probably the biggest challenge I had <clears throat> came in about 2009 after the 2008 crash. And at that time, I had pretty much gone through my savings and I had way too many employees for the work that I was doing at that point in time because from 2008 to 2009, my income, my gross receipts had dropped by more than 40% and I just could not sustain the payroll that I was putting out at that time. So I woke up in the middle of the night one night, my wife woke up in the middle of the night one night, we talked about it and we decided we had to go in and tell everybody that we were going to have to lay almost everybody off. So we laid everybody off, almost, not everybody, but a lot of people, and we had to downsize. And that was tough. That was really tough. So the writing was on the wall, but you had the guts to be able to do what was necessary. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and that's excellent. Well, what, what lessons did you learn from this experience? I think what I learned is that I had to be, at, number one, I had to deci- be decisive, and I had to... It was a matter of reality. I had to basically admit that my receipts were down and that I had to make a decision. And I had to know that I had these limitations now. And so I sort of learned a lot about learning to live with within the limitations that I actually have. I understand how you feel that way, Jim, but I think that you learned more from that. I think that you learned, you recognize that what you were doing then is not where you want your future to be. Am I misunderstanding here? If you're willing to step out and go a different direction, chart a new path. There's a lot of truth to that because at that same time, even before the recession hit, I was pretty much feeling burned out with the law. 
and I was tired and I was already making, taking steps, taking steps to get into the next step, which at that time I was thinking, look, I remember talking to my wife. I said, Dorothy, I can't keep up this, this regime. It's killing me. I can do it for maybe 15 more years, but I got to get out. And what I want to do is I want to become a therapist. We had met some therapists on a, a, a cruise up to Alaska one year, and I was so impressed with them. They were some older folks. And I said, what do you guys do? You're so nice. I, I just, I just want to know what you do. They said, we help people find their true selves. I said, what do you mean by that? They explained it to me, and they were therapists. So then I told Dorothy, I said, Dorothy, that's what I want to do. And, and so in 2008, before 2009, with this uh, layoff thing and the downsizing of my firm, I had already put in place for us to be in our master's program to become therapists. Along the way, about three or four years into it, I got my energy back as a lawyer. I fell back in love with what I do as a lawyer and helping clients with their legal issues. So I was able to kind of put the two together. And so after the master's program and getting a license, I went ahead and did a, a, a doctorate in clinical psychology. And so I'm about six to eight months away from getting into forensic psychology and doing child custody evaluations for the courts. Excellent. So it sounds to me like on a vacation, you met a couple, you saw what they're doing and said, this is what I aspire to do. But that was insufficient by itself because you recognize that I need not only to modify my practice, but I need to undergo a long-term educational process in order to become somebody different. Is, is that a fair summary of what you're doing? That's a fair summary because I did become a different person. I remember giving a little speech after getting the doctorate and thinking my, and I remember saying to everybody that I'm a more tolerant, unbiased, unprejudiced person than I was six years ago. And I, I believe that was really true because the people that I met along the way broadened my horizons. I, I started having some friends that are gay. I started having some friends that were from other countries. And this opened my horizons. It, it broadened my, my awareness. That's a good feeling when, you're, when your uh, horizons get broadened. You see that the world is bigger than we think it is. Mm -hmm. But think back at that moment, Jim, when things were deep and you weren't happy within your practice. You knew you were doing what it is you didn't want to do, but you felt stuck. Yeah. Can you think of that time? Yeah. And you felt that, wait a minute, there's another direction that I need to go in. You knew you need to go, but you were sort of stuck. Tell us about that moment in particular. What made you take that action to become that essentially a forensic psychologist with a child case or care expertise? Custody evaluations. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So way back in 2008 and prior to that, I think what got me into the the basically into the, the, the path of becoming a therapist was this couple. I was impressed with them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, didn't come out of the blue for me, really, because I remember having a conversation with my brother. One of my younger brothers is also a lawyer. He was a lawyer about 10 years before I became a lawyer. And I had a conversation with him, and it said, Brad, I'm thinking about becoming either a lawyer or a therapist. And so he says to me, he says, Jim, what, well, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. I, I like the idea of being a therapist, but they don't make as much money and there's not as much prestige. So I chose to become a lawyer. And it was a good fit for me because you're always learning as a lawyer. I'm a very curious person. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I probably should have gone into therapy first and then become a lawyer later. Because becoming a lawyer first and then a therapist later, that's harder because you have to put in 3,000 hours to become a therapist. And then I had to put in another 3,000 hours to become a psychologist. So would you say you were a little more confused about the direction you would have go in or more fearful to take those first steps in that new direction? Yeah. I Either think, or. Yeah. I think it, the fearful side is, is more of the truth because... I, I wanted prestige at that time, and I wanted money. 
And that swayed me from, I think, what really was my true calling, probably. Okay. And how did you overcome that fear to take the steps that you have taken to yeah. become the man you are today? I don't know. I think it was just step by step. I, it, it's not like you have, to do, you have to confront it all at once. It's a long journey to shift careers midstream. But you, I think for me, it started with that initial dream of being like these older folks that had this great life, at, at least in my opinion, from what I saw. <laughs> I, who knows what the reality of that was, but I assume that they really were truly content at their age and doing what they're doing. So each step along the way, I get a new vision of who that, who that person's going to be that I'm going to be. And so like right now, I see myself testifying and I see myself teaching and I see myself writing. And so that's kind of the new image that I have that propels me along and gets me through each day, I think. I would imagine, Jim, that there's a sense of fulfillment that comes from that testifying, writing and, uh, and, and speaking. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, fun to, it's fun to figure stuff out on a deeper level. Like, for example, why do people do the things that they do? It's, it's nice to have a little deeper understanding of what that, what that is rather than just saying, like, I think I saw a recent tweet from someone. I can't remember what it was, but basically he's crazy. Why does he do? Why did, it, why did that uh, Nevada shooter shoot? Because he's, he's a psychopathic, crazy person. Well, yeah, sure. But that doesn't really give you much understanding of how he got that way. I would love to speak about a current event today. We don't have enough time, but I would love to get your understanding as a forensic psychologist about the passing of Charles Manson that happened mm. today. This is a right. great, very psychologically fertile field, but let's leave that all the time for the moment. Get back on place. Tell me, Jim, we at the Future Shapers are big readers. We believe in reading. We love books. Tell me about a book, just one, that has made a big difference in your life. It's a book by uh, Daniel Siegel, S-E-I-G-E-L. It's called Mindsight. came out around 1998, I think. It's just an awesome book. It's about basically learning to have a deeper sense of integration in your life, integrating your life with people. I remember there's one story in there that talks about a very religious man who was in the Islamic faith. And I remember Daniel Siegel talking about this guy and how he basically had cut off anybody who didn't agree with him in his religion. And the thing is, is when I read that, and that was an example of a guy that was just too rigid in his, uh, his views and his thoughts instead of being open to new experience. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm just like that Islamic guy in my own religious way. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember saying to myself, I don't want to be that rigid person who cuts everybody off, cuts everything off that doesn't agree with his already preconceived ideas. And that was a big part of me actually growing and developing to be the person I am today, which I think is much more open to other people, much more open to experience than I was a good, uh, let's see, that would have been 10 years ago. Excellent. I think that as professionals, in particular male professionals, we tend to build up blocks around us. Our sense of reality, that is what's right. But we find that our sense of reality is in fact limiting, that there could be much more for us if we have that inclusive direction and intentionally shape our future. So that gentleman that you alluded to, seems to me is falling short on what he could accomplish because of the self-imposed limitations. Mm -hmm. I think you have overcome those limitations and you're stepping out in faith because you see a bigger future for yourself. Well, thank you. In that stepping out in faith, there is no doubt challenges that you're going to see, you're going to accomplish. What are some of the biggest challenges you're facing right now? Right now, I think one of the biggest challenges has to do with uh, managing my time and staying on track with the change because it would be, certainly it would be easy to just basically give up on the, the shift and the change that I'm going and just focus completely on my, my law firm, but that's not really where I want to be five years from now. And so the temptation to give up sometimes is, is big. 
that comfort zone, it always pulls us in, wants to make it a state where we are comfortable. That's not necessarily the right place to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly life, life, it's important to be able to adapt and change without adapting and changing. Uh, it's, that's a problem. When you look forward, say, three, four, five years from now, and you are established as a custody evaluations expert, what challenges do you uh, or concerns do you have to create or be that person? I think one of the challenges that I have is I have to remarket myself, re, I guess repackage myself as a psychologist, as a, uh, an expert witness, as an evaluator, because right now I'm known as a, a divorce attorney a custody, who is really good with custody and visitation issues. But that's a big shift, and so I have to, I have to get the word out. I have to get myself out there. Right now, I don't have to do much advertising because I've been a lawyer long enough to where I have a pretty good referral base. But who you are in the future is not who you are today. The referral base now is not the same as the referral base in the future. How will you overcome that rebranding challenge that you just alluded to? I'm not sure. I'm going to have I'm going to have to figure that out. Probably get the get the help of a, a business coach to give me some ideas on how to do that. Excellent. Well, to change the subject a little bit, we as future shapers believe that simple <clears throat> actions and habits when implemented over time with diligence and focus have huge outcomes in the future. How do the habits that you have now, how are they contributing to the future that you want to have? One of the things that I think is a strength that I have is I'm very consistent. I work hard every day. I, I don't think that Rome gets built in a day. And so I know that with projects, I have to work on them a little at a time, a little at a time in order to get a good product out. And so that's one of the strengths that I have is I, I do work consistently and I don't spend too much time, probably more time than I, than I should actually, procrastinating. And, but, I'm, but I'm pretty good about picking up the ball before it becomes a problem. Jim, you strike me as a proactive action taker. Don't let me down. I, that's what I want to see you in. I think that's accurate. <laughs> that's probably true, but I, I do procrastinate as much as the next guy, I think. For shame. So, Jim, changing the subject, we believe that our nation is on the cusp of a tipping point. Things could go either direction. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. We believe that it is incumbent on us as citizens to help to gently guide our nation in a peaceful, positive, inclusive, and quite frankly, economically prosperous direction. Tell me, Jim, what is America to you? America to me is a place where opportunity abounds and also freedom to be able to capitalize on your, your dreams. Uh, for example, I, I've had clients who grew up in Germany. I remember what he was telling, one of my clients was telling me is that in Germany, when he was growing up there, he had to take a test. And based on that test, as a basically a junior high student, they would decide what occupation he would go into. That would be tragic for me because in junior high, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And that has evolved over the course of my lifetime. I think that that kind of restriction on what you do for society where society tells you what you're going to do based on their own decision as to what you're best fitted for doing, that doesn't make sense to me. That that doesn't comport with freedom. And in America, it's one of those places where I think that, yes, you can do what you want to do. And that's that, to me, is one of the most awesome things about being, uh, living in America. Yes, we can be all we want to be as citizens of an awesome country. Thank you, Jim, for sharing. From the perspective of your professional and educational advice. What good advice can you give to the entrepreneurs who are listening to the Future Shapers Movement podcast? One of the things that you have actually told me even today is uh, knowing your why. I think that that's, that's really good. I mean, for me to connect with my why, my why would be to help children develop in the, the most secure environment that they can as an evaluator come up with their best interests uh, that, and make those kinds of recommendations to the courts that to me is a, a really powerful why for me and i think that for anybody who is in business if you know why you're doing what you do that's why you get out of bed right it's, it's natural 
Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Jim, for sharing with us. <clears throat> Tell, please share with the future Shapers audience how they, those ones that have resonated, listened to, and got value from what you've shared with them, how they can contact you. They can call me on the phone, 951-314-6634. They can email me, jim at jimhusen.com, H-U-S-E-N.com. They can buy my book on, uh, I have one book on Amazon. It's uh, it's on complex PTSD, which uh, may or may not be of interest to uh, to someone. And I have another book coming out probably at the uh, beginning of next year. I haven't really honed in on the title yet, but it's probably going to be called Sticks and Stones. And it's about domestic violence and its effect on children. Excellent. On behalf of the future Shapers community that's listening, I want to thank you for your time, Jim. And to all of the members of our future Shapers nation, what we've heard today is an example of a very confident, experienced, educated professional who has his heart in the right place, who saw the value, the niche opening of utilizing his legal expertise and combining that with the framework of a of a forensic psychologist to establish value both for the court and for the attorneys that would recommend in order to achieve a better outcome for the families that are going through the challenges that they face. We have heard of a man who is in transition. Please check on jimhusen.com and follow the story as it evolves. So thank you, future shapers. Check back for our next episode. It's, It's coming soon. Thank you for joining this episode of Shaping the Future podcast. We leave you, future shapers, with this challenge. Act boldly today to shape your future, because if you don't, it will absolutely be shaped for you.